All right, it's time to start getting this railing installed. So I think I've got figured out what I'm gonna do. I've got my four x four top and my four x four bottom rail, and we're going to be doing a black aluminum spindle. So I think that's gonna be a nice contrast to all the wood. We've got black windows, we've got black hardware. So I think that's a good look. Um, I've also got to make it simpler, more simple. I've got these black plugs and these plugs are going to get screwed in to the top and bottom. And then when I push these spindles in, I don't wanna do it yet because I don't wanna lock them in. They're gonna get locked in. So it doesn't make me have to drill holes for these spindles to go in on all of these rails. But I do want it to be nice and uniform and consistent. And most importantly, I've got seven of these rail sets to make. I wanna be efficient. So instead of every one of them coming through and measuring out all my locations, marking them, trying to get them all straight, I'm gonna go ahead and make myself a quick template out of plywood that I can put on each top and bottom rail with a hole already drilled out so I can just set the little plug right in the hole and fasten it right where it belongs. That's my thought anyway. So let's go ahead and do that and see how it goes. So in order to make this template, what I've got is a piece of one by four. This is the same width as one of those uh, four by four posts and it's the same length as the spacing. Now, the other thing I wanted to make sure is that it's straight. So this is a, a nice straight edge and I think it's definitely good enough. There's a slight, maybe a 64th of a gap here and maybe a little bit stronger 32nd right here. But overall, I think it's gonna be just fine because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this right on top of that four x four and I wanna make sure it's straight. If it's bowed, it's obviously not gonna be too, uh, too consistent. So what I'm gonna do is mark my center point down here and I'm gonna mark a center point down here. And it's okay to spend a little bit of extra time on something like this that's prep work because it should not only make your job easier in the long run, but also probably more accurate, consistent. And uh, in the end, you'll probably, you'll, you will probably save some time. The more you do, obviously, the more time savings that you're gonna have. So this is just to ensure a nice straight line. I could use my square and scribe the line at inch and three quarters. But if there's any inconsistency in the board, it's gonna show up in my line. All right, so now that I have my center line determined, the next thing I need to do is actually get the center of my board. I know it's around 38 and 5 eighths. So we're just gonna make a 38 and 5 eighths tick and check it coming back this way, so yes. And now I'm gonna lay out where my spindle locations are gonna be. So now that I have all my spindle locations, what I need to do is drill a nice clean hole all the way through the exact size as those plugs so that I can just set this on that four x four, drop a plug in and screw it. That way it doesn't move around. It will be perfectly placed where I want it. And I can repeat this process very easily just by moving this board from one four x four to another. I've got my Forstner bit set. I love this set. I'm thinking it's probably three quarter. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly three quarter. Let's go ahead and drill a three quarter plug out and see what it, what it does. So now I should be able to take the plug, sit it right in there. It's perfectly snug. Oh, this is gonna work out perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and drill the rest of these and we should be good to go. These have got to be like the cleanest Forstner bits ever by Diablo. Actually, I think they're, I think they're Freud, but regardless, I don't know. Ah, they're Diablo. All right, so there is my board, it's my template, and the plugs fit just ever so precisely right in there. So this should allow me to get a nice crisp straight line on the spindles accurately placed on every single one and uh, hopefully efficient as possible because we're getting close to the end on this project and we want to keep moving forward.
All right, to make this as easy as possible, what I'm gonna do is put one of these plugs in the end. Oh, thanks, dude. Oh, let's put those on. All right, so there we go. There's our top. Yeah. Yeah, I could, I could, I could, I could. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see the, how this one goes, and I'm gonna, you know, assess from there. That's why I did the one furthest away from everything. Live and learn, dude. This is all like, I mean, if doctors and freaking weathermen can practice, be wrong, and still have a job, we ain't getting fired if we mess up. We'll just do better next time. Learn from our mistakes, dude. This is a practice for when I build my own, personally. <laughs> time to install spindles. I think from down there, your sight will be more important than what I see up here because what you see from down there is what's going to be seen. And the thing is, like, it's also set back that You'll never see the bottom. Yeah. It's only the top. Okay. Oh no, I don't want to go down all the way. So that's that, now the question will be, how is it gonna feel when we Craig jig it? And what I'm gonna have you do is like on the top, push it, push it and keep everything as nice and tight as possible. Yep. Let's uh, check. I thought about getting the laser out, but this method will keep it as straight as this mezzanine, which is straight. Right, 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 right. And that's, that's dead nuts. I mean, it does actually feel really, I don't know what happens if somebody freaking jumps into it, you know? Once we get through this one, we could strap around the column and suck Remember them. Remember last time we did that though? Oh, that was stupid. <laughs> what, about right there? Yeah, it's not too bad. I still think I should put a lag right through the center. Yeah, if you want to, I mean, that's not a big deal. I mean, stronger the better, right? Yeah, that ain't gonna split nothing. I think, I mean, if I wanted to, I could pre-drill it, but I don't know if I even have to. I mean, we do this all the time. How does the, uh, how do the Craig jig holes look? Totally noticeable, but not bad. They look clean. Like this, this feels, this feels really nice. All right, well, I'm gonna do this last Craig jig over here and then uh, go on to the, go on to the next one. All right, we got the first rail set done and I think it's a good look. I think it's gonna look better, obviously, when these posts get finished, but I like the contrast of the black aluminum spindle. Um, Obviously there's a lot of wood in here, so it's a nice change of pace instead of having just a wooden spindle. We might have been able to get away with just a fully aluminum black rail and uh, 
or even we could have mounted some black aluminum rail in between all of these wooden newel posts. That might've been kind of cool too, Greg. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But these are some beefy hand, hand rails. I don't think they're going anywhere. And I feel really good, especially after getting a 10 inch 3 8 GRK in. And I'll be able to do that on every one side. I won't be able to do it from the back side, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's going anywhere. It's no WWE uh, wrestling uh, arena up here or a cage, Greg. So I don't think it's gonna see so, so much action. This is by far the easiest way to measure in between two objects and get a very accurate reading. You want this back? Yeah, I'm done. I'm gonna go cut my bottoms, get all those prepped, and then bring them back up and install the bottoms. I like it, huh, Greg? What do you think, bye? <laughs> huh? E time? Now that I've got my bottoms all in place and they all fit really nicely, what I'm gonna do is get all my tops cut. I'm gonna get the spindle set, the top set where I want them to make sure everything is good and I can get a visual, you know, looking down the top rails to make sure everything looks good. It should be as straight as my floor is, which I know that was all done with a laser. Uh, but, you know, it's just good to double check because you never know and I just want to make sure that it's uh, good before we proceed. Now this is also where I'm going to want to check plumb. So this one I could cut really tight because it wouldn't hurt me to have this post pushed over just a hair. So we're just going to double check this. Six, five, and three eighths. We're going to go an extra 16th. So that means I better not cut the next one until I get this one. So I'll keep using the previous board to straighten out the post for my next board, if that makes sense. So now at this point, all I'm really doing is I'm just pushing it right near the top on the back side, and then I just spread the post out just to get these in and make sure that they're good. Making sure that uh, the joints have very minimal gappage. Obviously that way I can correct any that are no good. And by tightening up as I go, when I set these columns, I knew that I'd be coming off of that end wall, which meant that wasn't gonna move. So I, I was kind of married to the perfect plumbness of that wall with that first column. But as I moved my way out, I knew that if I was slightly leaning towards that wall, I, with these guys, I could actually use um, the strength of the column to keep my post nice and tight. So what I mean by that is they're all leaning just slightly to the south, which is this way. So when I put my level on here, as I work my way out, I can bring them back to level by cutting these tops ever so slightly long. And then that also creates tension in between each post where those top rails are, hence why they're sitting there currently just sitting there. So this one here is ever so slightly leaning back this way, about an eighth of an inch at the most in that four foot level. So we'll go ahead and grab a distance six, five and three sixteenths, which has been kind of the theme and I'll add about an eighth inch to that, maybe not quite an eighth. I might just go six, five and a quarter. And uh, this one's not too bad. So let me go cut that. Okay. 
All right, we've got one more here. Let's see how we are on plum. Okay, now this one is good, which is, which is a good thing. I didn't want to have to push and pull the, the newel post on the corner. Six five and three sixteenths. Okay, we'll go get that last one. All right, by the way, all, all four pieces worked good and I'm just taking them back out now. I'm marking up the north end and what number they are in the order. And I'm gonna take them out to the garage where I've got all my tools set up and the sawdust can be out there. And we're gonna get all these uh, prepped with the plugs or the baluster mounts or whatever. Get the Craig jigs done and then come back and we should be able to install these all pretty darn easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all these balusters on and then I'll start putting the tops on. Might be a little challenging aligning everything up as I go, but if I need to call, if I need to call in some big guns, I got Greg downstairs doing some cleanup and prep work for the next project. Craig, what do you think the possibility of putting a uh, GRK into those Craig holes? Also, why not? Yeah, I mean... They got, they're about the same size, same head. A little bit longer. I think a structural screw. I think I might even have some number 10s, which would be even better. I wanna, I'm gonna give it a try and see, see what it does. Looks pretty nice, doesn't it? It like changes everything. I haven't, I haven't like adjusted everything perfectly yet. Yeah. Pretty good though. There's like one spot that looks like it's like a little spot. Well, there's uh, some of these bottoms have like, you know, a little bit of like yeah, yeah. hoops. So yeah. like if you look here, you can see that these tops aren't perfectly tight. Right. Because this has like a slight bow. And I thought you would rather have a bow than to look at it and see it do this. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, 100%. Cause I don't think the eye's gonna pick up a that because these top ones though top ones are pretty good
I mean, I feel way better about a GRK than a Craig jig screw. Right. I mean, either way, I mean, I think it's a flop way. Yeah, I know, but I just feel better about it. No, I don't think so. It's just that they're they're made to like, you know, have the pan head and they're just made to like suck, they're just cheap screw to suck a, a piece of trim together, you know? I mean, they're not a structural screw at all. So at least these are gonna resist shear force which is what I'd rather have than holding power. You know what I'm saying? Because these ain't going anywhere. They're held between pretty tight. Yep, almost done. And then it'll be figuring out the stairs. Oh, I love this drill. It's like the perfect clutch driver for doing this sort of work. I think the upstairs is officially done. All right. All right.